All right, guys, this is my Costa Rica grocery haul. I went to a farmer's market. I went to a grass-fed butcher. Let me show you guys how it all went down. I'm here at the farmer's market. Let's go check it out. Yes, I've got the Arawan bag in Costa Rica. It's a good bag. Come on. Hola, amigo, ¿cómo estás? Okay, seis, seis vasos. So this is raw goat's milk from my friend Rodrigo. And the awesome thing about being in a farmer's market is I can talk to him. I can say, how are the, how are the goats? What are you feeding them? Are they happy? And then you can really taste the quality difference. These guys will also do stuff like kefir and they'll do yogurt, all kinds of stuff. But gracias, amigo. Okay. Costa Rican money looks like Monopoly money. And so he's got a freaking shark on it. How cool is that? So raw milk, why do I like raw milk? When you pasteurize milk, it's in nature it changes the conformation of the proteins in the milk. Especially So raw milk, why do I like raw milk? There are lots of studies that associate kids who grew up drinking raw milk with lower rates of asthma, eczema, and allergies consistently. Kids who drink raw milk have lower rates of respiratory tract infections. There are studies with pregnant mothers showing improved immunologic markers with raw milk versus pasteurized milk. Humans are meant to drink milk raw. And as an added bonus, milk that is raw contains bacteria that can colonize your gut and your stomach and actually produce lactase enzymes. Historically, I was lactose intolerant, and now I can drink a pretty significant amount of raw milk especially for goat's milk, without any issues. If you're really sensitive to lactose and you want to drink milk, you can do cheese, which is gonna have most all of the lactose uh, fermented out of it, or you can do a kefir, which is gonna have the lactose fermented out of it too. If you're gonna do cheese, I would do raw cheese, like Parmigiano-Reggiano, or a kefir, ferment it yourself. But, I mean, look at this. That's the gold right there. I'll just have a little sip right now. Last thing I can tell you about milk is that I probably drink at least a liter, maybe a liter and a half to a liter and a quarter per day, and I'll put a bunch of honey in it. Um, I'll get like a local raw glyphosate-free honey at the market, and I'll add that to the milk. And I'm pretty active, guys. I don't worry about carbohydrates at all. In fact, I feel better when I eat more carbohydrates. So I'll put honey right in the milk. There's plenty of studies of honey shown it's beneficial for all sorts of outcomes. A lot of associations with honey improves cardiovascular disease and interventional trials of honey and diabetes showing it lowers fasting blood glucose. So I don't worry about honey. It's real honey, raw and organic. So let's go check out some of the fruits over there. Not vegetables. I mean, look at this, guys. You can buy a freaking half of a plantain tree right here. This is amazing. Just, <laughs> if you guys don't know about plantains, these are like big starchy bananas. It's a big thing in Central America. I wouldn't eat these raw, they're too starchy but you can cook them, you can grill them. Like a grilled plantain will be amazing. You can even, you can cook them in like butter or tallow, but you want to cook those, those huge bananas. Even grilled regular bananas, amazing too. Here are all the vegetables, guys. No surprises here, I'm gonna skip these, why? Vegetables are essentially the leaves and the stems and the seeds of plants. Seeds being seeds, nuts, grains, and beans. I'm not a huge fan of seeds, seeds, nuts, grains, and beans, because these all contain the largest amount of defense chemicals. In fact, I haven't talked about this a lot recently, but non-protein amino acids are hugely present in the seeds of plants, and they're actually an unripe fruit. So what are non-protein amino acids? In your body, there are 20 amino acids, nine of them are essential, that get incorporated into proteins. But in nature, there are hundreds of amino acids that don't get incorporated into human proteins, aren't used in the human body. Plants actually use these amino acids in their seeds as defense chemicals. They can get misincorporated into proteins. They can get... <laughs> these get misincorporated into proteins and can cause neurodegeneration because of protein misfolding. So not a fan of seeds. Leaves of plants definitely contain defense chemicals and they contain a lot of heavy metals. Plants will concentrate heavy metals in their seeds and also in the leaves, depending on what's in the soil that's around them. So I'm gonna skip that stuff. From these guys, I'm gonna get some oranges that I use to make orange juice. This is passion fruit. Hi. Why don't you try the mamachinos? They're really good. I will try some mamachinos. I love them. Thank you. And we've got avocado um, here. At this farm, these guys are all organic, so they don't use any pesticides. Avocado is a fruit, guys, so avocado is definitely a part of an animal-based diet. I'm gonna get one of those papayas and get some oranges. <laughs> 30 naranjas. I got 30 oranges, and uh, sometimes when people see me buying oranges, they think, isn't orange juice just sugar water? 
And the answer is clearly no. If you look at the research with orange juice, it's an incredibly healing food. There's controlled trials in humans showing that giving someone orange juice, blood red orange juice, red orange juice, or regular orange juice, improves endothelial function, actually improves glucose tolerance. There's no evidence in humans that orange juice worsens insulin sensitivity or creates insulin resistance or creates obesity, leads to fatty liver, any of these things. This is all just misinterpretation of the data. When people conflate studies with pure fructose, with studies with actual fruit and whole fruit. So orange juice is incredibly healthy. There are compounds in there, moringenin, hesperidin, that are probably very beneficial for us at the level of our vasculature. So I love orange juice. It's nutritious as well. Lots of nutrients, vitamins and minerals in there. So to make orange juice, I have a hand juicer in my house and I will juice about five or six oranges per day and I drink it in the morning after I get back from surfing and it's, it's an incredible part of my morning. Believe me, fresh squeezed orange juice, guys, that is amazing. So let's go get some coconuts. As the uh, farmer's market goes on, it becomes more of a workout. It's farmer's heavier. Market, farmer's carry. The farmer's market carry gets heavier and heavier, so now I've got 30 oranges, a papaya, a passion fruit, an avocado, and some other stuff in here. I'm about to add 15 or 20 pipas, and it's gonna get, it's gonna get really heavy. So this is cacao. It's a fruit, but chocolate is made from the cacao seeds. The problem or the tricky wrinkle here is that like most plants the cacao concentrates heavy metals in the seeds most soil has some heavy metals but if you are eating a cacao from a place with heavy metals the chocolate can have a significant amount of heavy metals in the chocolate i'm not a fan of chocolate in general because it's made from a plant seed but if you want to be chocolate it's not the end of the world just know what your total consumption of heavy metals is there's actually not a whole lot of fruit in here i tried to eat the cacao fruit one time and there's not much in there. It's just basically the seeds. Kind of disappointing for me. One of the fruits that I'd never seen in the States is these, they call them mamoncinos or rambutans, but uh, these are pretty good. Um, un kilo de estos, gracias. I got mamoncino. Yes. Hola, hola. Estás, amigo? Todo bien. Todo bien. La vida. It's uh, pipas. Sí. Cuantas gustas? These guys hooked me up with the, uh, the pipas. These are the young, sweet coconuts. So there are different types of coconuts, guys. There are young coconuts. There are old coconuts. And these young coconuts are the best. You just crack them open and drink the water. I don't eat the pulp. I don't feel like it's good for digestion. I think it's probably got some digestive enzyme inhibitors. But I just drink the water. ¿Cuántos tenemos? 17. 17. Sí, eso es perfecto. Sí, sí, todas. The bag is about to get heavier. Now we got like farmers carry on both. We got this one and this one. Let's keep going. Si, si, los mamoncitos got this. Hola amigo, buen día. Hola. ¿Cómo está usted? Okay, ¿qué tipos de huevos tenemos? Todo lo mismo. Todo es free range. Si. Pastoreo es free range. Oh, pastoreo es free range. Entonces, estos, ¿cuánto tiempo están afuera? Esperando todo el día. Todo el día. Entonces, ahorita pueden. Pueden salir de sí, la casita y sí. pueden comer hormigas, sí, insectos, insectos, plantas, sí. lo que ellas encuentren. Ok, perfecto. Gracias, amigo. Muchas gracias. Eggs are incredibly nutritious, good source of minerals, vitamins, all kinds of good stuff for humans, bioavailable protein, but what the chickens eat matters. And so when I'm thinking about shopping for eggs, I'm thinking about chickens that are predominantly not fed corn and soy, chickens that are eating mostly outside, bugs, worms, that kind of stuff, truly pasture-raised chickens, um, that's what I'm looking for with eggs. So you want the highest quality eggs because it matters. If the chickens are eating just corn and soy, if they're inside, the quality of the egg is gonna be different. So that's what I think about when I'm thinking about eggs. I might eat one or two eggs a day. I do the egg yolks raw mostly, it's just easier for me. I don't eat the whites raw because the white contains a protein called avidin, which binds B6. So if I wanted to eat the whole egg, I would just cook the whole egg. I find it really convenient and easy to just eat the pure egg yolk. Sometimes I'll even mix a raw egg yolk in my raw milk with honey, and that is delicious. You can make like ice cream out of this too. I've shown you guys this in the past. Anal based ice cream is raw cream, egg yolks, fruit, honey, and salt. That's how you make animal based ice cream, but putting raw yolks into milk is delicious. And I mean, that's a good way to wake up in the morning. There's a lot of nutrients in there. So what are nutrients are in eggs? Choline, vitamin A, biotin, folate. So, so nutritious for humans, bioavailable protein. Eggs are great, but know the quality. The other thing that I like to get at the farmer's market is honey. And it's great at the farmer's markets because I can ask the farmers, where are the hives in relation to other agriculture? Is there any pesticides sprayed around the hives? Um, and is it glyphosate free? So 
This is what I'm looking for in a honey, is organic, it's raw, glyphosate free, and all the producers here. This is grown on a big coffee farm. These guys do coffee as well. I don't drink coffee, you guys know that, but this is a nice light flavored honey. Um, so I'm gonna get some honey to go in the milk with some rye egg yolks, and yeah. So that's everything. We got some meat, we got some organs. I got to the farmer's market here. I got coconuts and fruit and honey. And this is one of the reasons I love living in Costa Rica is farmer's markets like this that happen two or three times a week. I can meet the farmers, I see my community, I see friends, I meet kids who are dancing in my videos. It's just a fun time. The majority of what's here is local. It's all grown on farms around here. I can talk to the farmers and ask if they use pesticides and it supports a local economy and a community. So this is just one of the things I love about living in Costa Rica. There are benefits to being, I think, in a smaller community and it makes my life a different quality. I'm here at a local grass-fed butcher. I think this is pretty cool that uh, even in like small town Costa Rica, we've got grass-fed meats. And one of the things I like about living in a small community is I can talk to the farmers, I can talk to the guys that raise these cows, talk about how they're fed. Are they given antibiotics? Are they given injections? Are they just fed all grass? And yeah, everything checks out and this, this meat is great. So these guys will have meat and organs, all kinds of good stuff. Let's go check it out. So I've got lots of ground beef already at the house. Today I'm gonna get skirt steak, which is actually the diaphragm of the animal, and a ribeye, which looks really good. Ribeye is one of the cuts near the ribs, different part of the cow, but I didn't know that there was only one hanger steak on the animal, but the skirt is actually the diaphragm. So I'm gonna get those steaks and then we'll see what else I'm gonna get here. Hopefully they have some liver. These guys know me well, so I can just go back there and get it myself. Those look pretty good. I'm also gonna get some bones. I use these to make bone broth, which I eat basically every day. So I think it's important when you're eating meat to balance the amino acids that are high in muscle meat, like a ribeye or a skirt, with the amino acids that are high in like a bone broth or a collagenous tissue. So which amino acids am I talking about? Uh, tryptophan, methionine, high in muscle meat. Glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, high in the bones and the collagen. So these balance each other out. This is kind of like organs. The nutrients in organs, whether it's liver or heart, are gonna balance the nutrients in meat. Meat is a great source of vitamin B12, vitamin B6, and zinc, where organs like liver have folate, riboflavin, a little more choline, biotin, vitamin A, and copper, things that aren't as well represented or not at all in the muscle meat. So just like I wanna eat organs with my muscle meat, I wanna eat collagenous tissue with my muscle meat. What's the idea here? It's not rocket science, it's eating the whole animal, and then you get this fully rounded out nutritional profile. I think a lot of the bad rap that meat gets sometimes is due to people only eating muscle meat. That's never the way we would've eaten it in the past. Again, the quality of the meat matters, but eating the whole animal, as much of the whole animal as possible, is the way to do it. You'll feel differently. I feel better when I have liver in my diet. I feel better when I have collagenous tissues, bone broth in my diet. They've also got some good butter here. Butter is a health food, guys. I mean, the animal fats are so healthy for humans. Ceric acid is a long chain saturated fat that is associated with leanness and health in animal models and in humans. It affects mitochondria in a positive way in humans. It turns them on, essentially. There's a study in nature that shows that, so that's in butter. Butter also has fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin E is in butter, vitamin K2. There's so many nutrients in butter. You just think of butter as fat and it makes you fat but it's completely the opposite. Butter is a nutrient rich food for humans. It fuels all of these hormonal processes, your brain, I mean, your brain is made of fat. Your hormones are made of skeletons that are derived from fats. And so butter is a health food. It's a way to help support your hormones, your libido, your energy, your brain function. I always kind of play with my macros a little bit, but I'd probably say I get 35, 40% of my calories from fat now. Usually it's fat that just occurs in the steaks that I eat. But if something is a little bit lean, I will add butter to it, and a little bit of butter to a steak that's too lean, or ground beef that's too lean, will fix the problem immediately. I think saturated fat gets a bad rap because of epidemiology, associational studies, but if you really dig into the data, this is good for you, and you'll feel it. I mean, there's a reason that butter tastes delicious. It's healthy for you. It's the type of thing your ancestors have been craving and seeking for hundreds of thousands of years. Look at that, guys. Score. Fresh beef liver in the package. Look at the color of that. That's nourishment right there. This is a pound of liver for $5. That is probably some of the best $5 you could ever spend in your life in terms of nutrients and replacing micronutrients, vitamins, and minerals. You're not getting other places. Look at the color on that. It's just beautiful. Thanks guys. See you. There it is guys. This is a couple days of meat, a couple days of milk, a couple days of fruits. I'm going to make some bone broth. Hope you enjoyed the journey with me. Time to feast.